action to the Capitol Planning Commission meeting. In accordance with California Senate Bill 361, this meeting is not physically open to the public. Commissioners and staff are meeting via Zoom, and there are several ways for the public to watch and participate. Information on how to join the meeting using the Zoom application or a landline or mobile phone, along with how to submit public comment during the meeting tonight, is available on our website, cityofcapitola.org, and on the public meeting agenda. As always, our meeting is cablecast live on Charter Communications, cable TV channel 8 in the city of Capitola, and on channel 25 throughout Santa Cruz County. This meeting is being recorded to be rebroadcast the following Monday and Friday at 1 p.m. Meetings can also be streamed live on YouTube or on the city's website. Our technician tonight is Olivia Peely. And with that, we can... Uh, Begin uh, the meeting with the roll call. Luis, we have a roll call, please. Lieutenant Chief Kelly. Lieutenant Chief Here. Kelly. Lieutenant Mayor. Here. 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 Lieutenant Mayor. Here. Uh, can you can you pick, I'm not sure how many but we received additional public comment on the 1515 prospect application um, I don't believe we received any other additional public comment today and anything else would have been received within 24 hours on other uh, projects um. So the 1515, that's on the consent calendar. Should we uh, uh, not pay attention to last minute comments until we need to? Uh, or should we uh, distribute those? Because some comments came in at the very last minute. I'll ask the commissioners, have you all received the last minute comments that came in regarding your application? Did you have time to review them? Yes, uh, but we also got one on 106, Cliff. Okay, so we've, we've also received a comment on 106. Thank you. So is there anybody who has not had a chance to, read, to see or review those? Uh, hearing none, I'll consider those uh, added to the agenda as attachments. And with that, we can move on to public comment. This is the time when uh, members of the public can can speak on items that are not on the agenda, short communications, three minutes or less. Uh, Katie, are there any uh, anybody uh, on the Zoom or an email who wishes uh, to uh, join us with public comments on items not on the agenda? Checking the attendees now on Zoom and I do not have any hands raised on the team. Now checking our email public comments not have any new email public comments. Very good. Then let's move on to commission comments. Are there any commissioners who wish to speak on items which are not on the agenda? Um, if no one else does, I do. I have, uh, I'm, I'd like to speak a little bit in general about the process. Because there are a lot of home, homeowners on tonight's agenda, I thought this is an appropriate time to express my sympathy uh, to all applicants, not just tonight's <coughs> applicants, but everybody who's had to endure this bureaucratic nightmare, uh, which is the permitting process. Uh, sometimes it can be very onerous, and I've been through it as well. Uh, and in fact, my experience actually drove me to get involved in local government so that if I couldn't change it, at least I could understand it. Uh, the good news is that the, the process has gotten better over the years, it's streamlined. We now have a new municipal code, which is more clear in its requirements. The development and design review now focuses more on technical requirements rather than, a, than subjective requirements. And we have uh, more and more projects that can be approved with staff review and not even reach this committee. 
So, but when it does come to this committee, uh, we do have responsibility. It's the planning commission's responsibility to represent the community, the community's interests, and uh, and represent them and interpret uh, the municipal code and the general plan. Un uh, unfortunately, this is this is a task uh, infused with a lot of different interpretations of those documents. And although I believe an applicant should reasonably expect predictable and consistent rulings, uh, we've got a long way to go. Uh, five minds uh, cannot always act as one. So um, again, hopefully tonight's agenda, we can, uh, we can get a lot of win-win results, but uh, I just wanted to express my, my sympathies towards this, uh, towards this process. It is, it is very difficult for the applicants and the neighbors and and uh, I feel your pain. So with that, I would like to move on to staff comments. Does staff have any comments? Yes, I do have staff comments. Um, I just wanted to let the Planning Commission know and the public know that we received an appeal um, on 1410 Prospect Avenue, which we have not set a date yet for coastal, for. Um, the city council to review at this time, but we're hoping to set a date at either the next city council meeting or the meeting after that. There's a few items they, um, we had an appeal from the RTC regarding the zero setback on the rear lot line. And um, as they're looking at development plans for the future of the rail, they have concerns with the zero setback. So we're working with the applicant and hoping to, we'll have that in front of the um, city council at some point this summer. Uh, if there are no more staff comments, uh, let's move on to item three, which is the approval of the minutes. Let's take the minutes one at a time. Um, are there any comments or changes to the minutes of March 3rd, 2022? Um, hearing none, are there any changes or comments to March 31 special meeting minutes? And if no one else has any comments, I do. I believe there's an error on item 3A with regards to um, parking in the uh, setbacks. Um, I discussed this with Brian and suggested an edit. Um, if Brian's there, if he could maybe read it. I basically said that the issue that at least I was concerned with was was I didn't wasn't concerned with three stories. I was more concerned with the notion of uh, 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 sacrificing setback for parking as opposed to um, sacrificing setback for um, three stories. So, uh, Brian, are you there? Can you read my edit? Yeah, we had you edit it. We actually added a new sentence that says uh, Commissioner Wilk preferred parking in the front yard rather than sacrificing front yard setback. Okay. That, that's my only comment to uh, that. And if that has been amended and no one has any objections to that amendment, uh, I'm ready to hear a motion to approve the minutes of both March 3rd and March 31st, 31st if anyone cares to move such. Anybody interested in approving the minutes, commissioners? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for March 3rd and March 31st. This is Commissioner Westman. I'll second. All right, we have an, a, a motion to approve by Commissioner Westman and a, and a second by Commissioner Christensen. Um, are there any other comments? Uh, if not, uh, we could we have a roll call vote. Aye. 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 Very good. So minutes are approved as amended. Let's move on to item number four, which is the consent calendar. This, this uh, is an item where we address um, 
all the items under the consent calendar as one and uh, make a motion to approve or deny. Does anybody wish to uh, pull any of the items from the consent calendar? Uh, this is Commissioner Westman. I would ask that you take the items separately since I need to recuse myself on the Oak uh, Drive project because I live too close to it. All right, very good. Um, so let's do that. Um, let's uh, talk about uh, item then, item 4A, 504 Oak Avenue. Um, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Uh, Commissioner, uh, Ruth. Commissioner Ruth uh, moves approval of item A. Is there a second? A second. Um, Commissioner Christensen provides the second. Um, are there any comments? If not, uh, Luis, we have a roll call vote on consent calendar item 4A. Uh, Aye. Aye. Commissioner Ruth? Aye. Commissioner Westman? I'm recusing myself. Chair Westman? Aye. So um, consent calendar item 4A passes. Let's move on to consent calendar item 4B, 1515 Prospect Avenue. Are there any commission comments on that item? or does anybody wish to make a motion? I vote approval. Well, Mr. Mr. Right, Chairman. We, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Newman. I, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if it's clear. I know there was some uh, concern, neighbor concern about the project, and I'm not sure that they are aware that they have the opportunity to also turn this into a public hearing. Excellent point. Um, let's let's bring that out to public comment then. Katie, uh, can you reach out to the public and ask, is there anybody who wishes to bring item consent item 4B uh, into the public hearing? Yes, um, so we've brought up on our screen how to participate and if any member of the public would like this item pulled off of consent agenda for public discussion, um, now would be the time to raise your hand in Zoom. You can dial star nine to raise your hand, um, or else if you're in the app, you have the ability to raise your hand. I'm gonna go and look at our, I'm not seeing, I'm gonna check our public comment under email. Hmm. Um, So it looks like we, we did have a member of the public that um, needed the code to be updated to join and uh, Brian, uh, our senior planner sent that to that person, but it was not regarding uh, public comment on this project. Now I'm gonna go to Zoom and I do not see any attendees with their hands up either. So there's no request to pull this off of the consent agenda. In that case, I will move approval. There's, a, there's already a motion on the floor, Ed. We just oh, need I'll a second. second. <laughs> I'll second. We already have a second. So we have a motion by Commissioner Ruth. Well, then I'll vote for it. Commissioner Christensen. <laughs> Do we have a roll call vote, please? Yes. Commissioner Christensen. Aye. Commissioner Newman. Aye. 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 Uh, it passes unanimously. So we have, uh, we can move on from the consent calendar now to public hearings. This is an opportunity for the public to discuss each item individually. We'll have a staff presentation followed by questions from the commission, followed by public comment, then finally the deliberation and decision. First up on public hearings is item 5A, 519 Monterey Avenue. After we have a presentation. Uh, thank you, Chair Wilk. I'll be giving the presentation. Pull up my screen here. So proposal uh, 519 Monterey Avenue, this is a, a, a 
design permit proposal for a first and second floor addition of 140 square feet. Uh, there are front and rear facing upper decks and there's a proposed new fence and gate in the front yard. I'll note here on the site plan that uh, the property is sitting uh, beside two uh, two-story single family homes and then has a, a, a wooded area behind it between it and the Brookview Brookvale Terrace uh, mobile home park. There's sort of a natural transition. This, this wooded area drops down about 35 feet and is about 50 feet uh, wide horizontally. And then across from uh, the, the middle school. Uh, so really only two flanking uh, single family neighbors uh, with this property. So I had to, uh, apologies for, for flipping the site plan sideways, just the aspect ratio, I had to do it. So I'm gonna go left to right and just introduce the, uh, the project. Uh, what you have is the driveway there adjacent to Monterey. The tan highlighting is the first floor and the green is the second floor. I'll call attention to the, on the right side of the green, there's a little pop out on the first floor. That's a bathroom uh, that was added on. Looks like after the original home was built. Uh, part of the proposal here is to rebuild that bathroom in location and then to add a, a two bathrooms that are accessed off of uh, the second floor above. And then wrapping around that is a proposed upper floor deck at the rear, uh, taking access from the two adjacent bedrooms. And then off the front, an 88 square foot deck that takes access from another bedroom facing the front. Uh, and this is set into uh, what is now the, the attic of the garage and the roof framing and ridge of the, the garage roof. So looking at the elevation drawings, upper left, uh, that's just what I was describing. That's the front deck and then the lower right, the purple highlights are the floor area additions, upper and lower, uh, consisting of three bathrooms and uh, the deck railing and span uh, on the lower, lower right in the rear. Um, we did uh, give some feedback to the applicant during the plan review process, uh, primarily about uh, privacy and mitigation measures. Uh, they did bring, bring back some modifications to the plan uh, and these elevations show they're, they're proposing partitions along the side, uh, which would, would offer some privacy mitigation to so the side yard neighbors that I pointed out. Uh, and the form here is for the bottom 42 inches, which is required railing would be a little uh, half wall or parapet wall uh, wrapped in a, a similar cladding as the, uh, as the primary dwelling. And then the upper 30 inches would either be they would be an either or of uh, terrace, uh, sorry, an, uh, like opaque window or a trellis cap. So these are uh, mitigation. I'll also point out the, the projection here is uh, 12 feet from the face of the building. Uh, second layer of mitigation that they're proposing is, is landscape screening. And uh, this is a, a cutaway of the site plan for the rear yard, so the deck in plan view. Uh, the two highlights flanking either side in the green, those are rectangles that measure five feet by 20. Uh, and the, the idea here is to propose 10 foot tall at installation, those would likely be 24 inch box. Uh, bay laurel screening, which is a, a pretty common evergreen shrub or uh, hedge type plant that is used uh, for this purpose. So two layers of mitigation proposed. Uh, the one difference uh, with our recommendation from staff tonight is we're, we're adding a third layer of mitigation here, and that is to bring the deck back to a max projection of seven feet. And uh, primary reason for that is uh, just in review of uh, the design review criteria, I highlighted uh, F with privacy. Um, I think that's the primary reason for this recommendation. And what it does, I'm gonna take the pointer here, is it, it brings this flush with the bathrooms. Uh, so it further enhancing the, the mitigation on all sides of these decks, but still does allow for uh, a reasonable amount of area for enjoyment for the, the applicant. For a bit of context, we've got some just site photos. We did do a site visit and met with the architect. Uh, we also received one email um, 
from 601 Monterey. Uh, the, the conclusion of that email was recommending the staff, a uh, seven foot condition, uh, but otherwise supporting the project. And then uh, at 515 Monterey, we received a letter of full support for the project. And the lower two photos are just looking out over the wooded area on the left and uh, a profile view of the rear of the residence on the right. So with that, just highlighting some of the conditions, uh, upper floor decks, uh, we've been requiring a code minimum amount of lighting and having it be compliant with uh, dark sky and be shielded to prevent light trespass. And then we're recommending condition 13, which is to reduce uh, the deck projection to seven feet. Uh, I would just like to offer that the applicant was very cooperative and very receptive to uh, these mitigations and uh, so to their credit but they, they did want to be heard uh, with the proposed 12-foot projection as originally presented so I believe they have a short presentation but that's the conclusion of mine and I'd be happy to take questions are there any questions of staff no. Commissioner Weston no well I have a question I, uh, this is chair Wilk I, I could you please reiterate why you, uh, the staff felt that the privacy mitigations that were presented were inadequate? Yeah, I, I, I think it, there's another layer of this too. Uh, I kind of touched on it, but um, the design review criteria, and I'll, I'm gonna go back to my show here, uh, talk about massing and scale. Uh, and this is actually proud of, of the building and creates a new building line so there's a bit of a design element um, that on top of the functionality of a, a larger deck is going to be um, accommodate longer activity uh, which could present more noise and uh, a, a bigger impact to the neighboring property so I think the two design criteria F and H are primary reasons thank you any other questions of staff? Okay. Um, let's see. What do I do next? I'm out of, I'm out of uh, control here. We're ready for public comment. Does the, um, the applicant wish to make a statement? I have two hands up in Zoom. Um, Brian, I apologize. I don't know the applicant's last name. Is it Mark Sikowski? I believe so, yeah. Okay, so George Mark Sikowski is the delegate. Mr. Mark Sikowski, go ahead. I believe I need Sean possibly to unmute. Okay, can you hear me okay right now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, so this is George Martinkowski. I'd like to thank you for uh, actually um, supporting uh, the seven feet and, and, and hopefully we will move to the next step. The idea behind the 12 was that both of those bedrooms facing uh, that direction are designed for kids. So the idea behind was so they can just, you know, go from left to right and right to right. This is not for any, any party. I mean, those bedrooms are pretty small and. And that's, 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 you know, that's, that's uh, my explanation of what I was trying to achieve, but I am very happy with whatever was, uh, uh, you know, and pre presented right now. And I'd like to thank you for everybody and hopefully we'll go to the next stage. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Markinkowski. Are there any other public comments? Katie? All right, we have Elizabeth Batron and Sean, could you please unmute Elizabeth? Allow her to speak. Elizabeth, you should be able to speak now. Thank you. Hi, thank you so much for, for taking a minute to hear me. Um, I'm the, the neighbor at 601 Monterey. We've lived there 23 years and I am fine with having um, a second story deck next door, but I did just make the request that it that I agree with staff that I think a depth of seven feet is sufficient. Um, 
And so I'm simply asking to, to do that because I feel that's more in keeping in context with the existing community neighborhood and the sound levels. I, I'll tell you quite honestly, I'm here at my daughter's house in Denver and, and their Airbnb rules are such that, you know, folks can, she has an Airbnb next door. And when you, you're sleeping with the windows open, which is one of the nice things to be able to do in your house every night. Um, if people are out on the porch until as they were last week, 3.30 in the morning talking, <laughs> the, just having a porch that's a smaller size would indicate that, that it would stay a quieter space. And I, and I do know that the city has recommended the seven foot depth in other instances. And I'm just hoping that you'll consider it again in that, in this one. And that's it. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mrs. Bertrand. Um, any other comments? Yes, we have comments from uh, architect John Hoffaker. John, if you can allow him to speak. Um, hi, this is John. I've unmuted. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, no, thanks for all your efforts on the project. And Brian was very good uh, throughout the whole process. And my question just is, I'm assuming that the side screens are, would still be in the project and the side vegetation. But if that can be clarified, uh, that's it. So um, I think that's really a question of staff. So they've done um, mitigation attempts, uh, namely the vegetation and side screens, which were deemed inadequate. And so as a result, staff recommended uh, moving it back seven feet. Does that mean uh, that the uh, requirements for the side screens and vegetation uh, are still in the um, requirements for or condition for approval or um, is he allowed to change his drawings to remove those if he gets the seven foot setback or the seven foot porch so the staff recommendation to be clear is, is with the mitigation as proposed and with the staff recommendation that the deck be pulled back so if the commission wants to uh, entertain alterations uh, that's that's your purview, but our, our recommendation is with mitigation as presented. Thank you. Any other um, comments from the public? I have a question of this uh, uh, witness person. Go ahead, Commissioner Newman. Uh, I, I'm kind of confused about the applicant's position regarding the uh, lessening of the side of the extent of the deck. Is that something that is acceptable to the applicant? Uh, is it a uh, concern or, or what? So is that a question to uh, Mr. Marcinkowski or to the, uh, Mr. Horface, Hoface, Hoffaker, sorry. Yeah, it could be either, but I thought maybe Mr. Hoffaker could uh, address that. Um, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, actually, it would be George Markowski who does it. it uh, the seven feet is acceptable from my understanding with George. And uh, I think he'd be doing the side screens and the planting also. Um, but I can't speak for him on, on that. I, I was, I'm was i just confused whether uh, he'd rather plant more materials and not have the side screens or have the side screens and not do the planting or he's happy doing both because he wants a little more privacy also. So if George can get on and address these things, it would be more clear. That would be helpful to me. If it's Mr. Markinkowski, are you on? Yes, there yes, you go. yes. 
So it's it, it possible to add in terms of uh, a green, green uh, barrier, I would prefer that instead of having like a, some kind of permanent uh, things on the balcony. So yeah, yes, oh. I'm, I am I always, uh, you know, support uh, more privacy and uh, and I think, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with seven feet. This, this can be very nice, actually, addition to the house and a you know, nice place for kids. I mean, uh, because those bedrooms are small, and the idea behind was to just make some some kind of open, open additional area. So I, I'm okay with that. But if I can eliminate um, something, I would rather prefer uh, some something green, very tall, than, than uh, wooden barrier or any kind of, uh, permanent barriers on the balcony. But I am happy with, with what I hear from you guys uh, for, for you supporting the project. So. Thank you, Commissioner Newman. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Are there um, any other, uh, let's see, any other public comment? If not, let's move on to Planning Commission deliberation. Does anybody uh, want to start in on this? I have a question. Commissioner Root, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I can support either the staff recommendation or the original plan, but, but I, I, I do have a question for staff. And if there's going to be a six foot opaque wall on both sides of the deck, it would seem that if the deck extended out further, the resident would have a less of a view of the backyards of the adjacent homes than if the deck were shorter. That's the problem I'm having with this. Ryan, can you address that? Yeah, I'm just not sure yeah. how you arrived at the fact that by shortening the deck, it affords more privacy. It gives you a bigger view into the adjoining yards that way. But it does eliminate this this connection, so there is a yeah. there's viewpoints along here. So we, we can go to a site plan. So if the wall was shortened to here, this is this is the staff recommendation is is seven feet is here. So the question is. Or the point is, this is more screening to extend it out? No. I, I'm assuming there's going to be some sort of opaque feature wall six foot high, not the lattice work, because you mentioned also the opaque glass uh, on each side of the deck. And if that's the case, if you extend the deck out further, there's less of an angle to look into the backyards of the adjacent homes. With a shorter jet deck, you can see more of the backyard of the adjacent home, which is actually less privacy. Basically, you're yeah. putting blinders on the horse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I think I understand. I, so the, to be clear, that the, there's an either-or option here that the, the commission could talk about if, if you want to get into details. But they, they talk about a lattice cap or opaque. So we were fine with either-or. Uh, we didn't. We didn't parse through that detail. But as far as the extension, um, I think in the, the second finding that I talked about, about projecting, a, a deck is not counted as floor area. It's not quantified in any measurable uh, development standard. So we are trying to mitigate the, the ability to use it, this space, uh, also, but also find the compromise of allowing an applicant to use it. Um, when it projects also further than the building line, it's creating a new bulk and mass. So there's a design element to our recommendation as well. Okay, yeah, like I said, I can support it either way. Uh, let me just weigh in that I that I also uh, am okay with the uh, privacy mitigation, mitigations that the applicant originally submitted and uh, don't feel that the additional recommendations by staff are required. Anybody else want to comment? One, one more. Um, Go ahead, oh, yeah, Commissioner sorry, Richardson. I, I just needed, I, you broke up, uh, Commissioner Wilk. I just wanted to, to hear what you just said. Oh, Could I'm sorry. Repeat? I just said that the original uh, submittal by the applicants, which was the, which, uh, with the larger deck, 
Mm -hmm. uh, but with the privacy mitigations that he proposed, namely the, the green vegetation as well as the side barriers, um, yeah. are, are okay as far as I'm concerned. Right. And it's that staff that's recommendation good. doesn't need to be, uh, you know, yeah. addition to that. 100%. Yeah, I gotcha. Thank you for repeating yourself. <laughs> I, I agree. Right. I, see, I see Commissioner Weston's hand up. Okay, okay I'm uh, sorry. Uh, I don't have any particular project uh, problems with the project. I think they've done a nice job with it. I do agree with staff uh, to accommodate um, people in the neighborhood that having the seven foot deck is more appropriate. And um, for me, if they um, uh, have the seven foot deck, uh, I think that they could uh, eliminate the requirement for the planting along the fence because uh, reducing the deck to seven feet is about noise coming from the deck, uh, not so much people looking into the neighbor's yard. So I could support it with the uh, staff recommendations, but eliminate, eliminating the landscaping requirement along the fence. Commissioner Newman. Hey, uh, as a general proposition, I agree with Commissioner Wilk and I think Commissioner Ruth on the original design being being adequate. I'm concerned about, I find it very difficult to navigate this issue of uh, how far we should go in modifying an applicant's project that meets uh, the technical standards of the city based on subjective um, protections for uh, other property owners, neighboring property owners. It just seems like it's, it's, it's a very arbitrary and uh, a difficult, I guess, uh, balancing for me to get a handle on. Um, and I'm concerned about the staff kind of getting too proactive uh, in that regard, uh, taking one side or the other um, on these issues of how much I mean, the, the concern of the one neighbor was regarding short-term rentals, which I don't think that's uh, a, a concern. This isn't in the short-term rental district, is it? So, no. so she was concerned about uh, people uh, partying at 3 a.m. And uh, you know, I, I don't know how applicable that is. So I, I, I'm fine since the applicant doesn't seem to be screaming about the change. Uh, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't just go forward with this application, but I, I do want to support the comment of Commissioner Wilk that we uh, should be careful about uh, how much we restrict otherwise valid applications. Um, any other comments? Commissioner Christensen? I completely agree with your comment, Commissioner Wilk and Commissioner Newman. <laughs> the, um, I, I think that there's nothing limiting him from having the 12 foot deck. And I mean, him being so kind to take the suggestions is wonderful, but um, it's not up to us to design his deck. And I, and I agree with the, basically everything Commissioner Newman just said. <laughs> so would you like to make a motion? I, I would make a motion to um, approve, I, I mean, I don't have any problem with his original design. I, I would kind of, in my mind, I would, I would want to give him the opportunity to have the 12 foot deck. Um, is that, I mean, but that's not what staff is suggesting at this point, is it? Is that? Not what staff is suggesting, but you can certainly move to, um, uh, move to approve the um, application as originally submitted. I'd like to do that. Could I, could I move to approve um, the application as originally submitted with the 12 foot deck and the landscaping screening? I would, like to add, clear? I, I would like to add a condition to the approval. And that would be that on both sides of the deck, the six foot wall be made of opaque material and not lattice. Yes, <laughs> lattice is ugly. Are you willing to accept that amendment, uh, Commissioner Christensen? Yes, yes. Okay, and is that then therefore a second, Commissioner Ruth? Yes, I'll second. Okay, we have a 
Um, proposal by Commissioner Christensen and a second by uh, Commissioner Ruth. Uh, is it clear what uh, what we're moving, uh, Brian? Yes, that would strike condition 13 uh, and it would add a new condition to clarify that the cap on the wall be opaque and not the lattice option. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on this motion? If not, let's take a vote. Louis, do we have a roll call vote, please? Yes. Commissioner Christensen? Aye. Councilman Nunez? Aye. Aye. Commissioner Ruth? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? No. Chair Ruth? Aye. Um, application passes four to one. Um, good luck, Mr. Marcinkowski. And we are ready to move on to item 5B, which is 106 Cliff Avenue. Do we have a staff report? Yes, good evening. Yeah, grab my notes. Okay. The application before you includes a design permit, historical alteration permit, coastal development permit, as well as a variance request or variance requests uh, to a historic three-story single-family residence at 106 Cliff Avenue. The presentation tonight focuses on items that were addressed during the April 7th hearing, uh, but we're prepared to discuss any topics that were covered in the staff report. The site, as it appears today, located in the Depot Hill neighborhood, surrounded by a variety of historic properties overlooking Capitol Village. The applicant is proposing additions and modifications to the primary dwelling unit and for the demolition of two non-historic structures located along the rear property line and to construct a new accessory structure that includes a ADU, or accessory dwelling unit, and two-car garage. is the proposed site plan. I wanna add that there haven't been any design modifications or site, site plan alterations since it was last seen during the uh, April 7th meeting. These are the existing and proposed elevations uh, to the front. These are the proposed and existing elevations on the side hand side <coughs> are the existing and proposed on the left side and this is the rear elevation existing and proposed the new second story deck is proposed on the rear accessible from both within the residence as well as by an external spiral staircase and this deck is about 246 square feet So this is just a, a topographical view of it with the aerial to give a better idea of the context of structures and, and open space. The orange is the approximate layout of the, the actual conditioned massing, and then the blue is the second story deck. The, uh, nearest, uh, the nearest residence is 108 Cliff Avenue to the north. It's approximately 18 feet away. Staff visited the site and took several photos from the second story. On the left, you have 108 Cliff Avenue from the north corner of the, the existing structure. And on the right, you have a view towards the rear of the property. And in the far background, you can see um, the existing garage and this fence line is about where the front of the proposed AD will be just to give you some spatial context. This is the proposed uh, com combination ADU and garage. The ADU itself is subject to limited standards, including maximum size of 800 square feet, maximum height of 16 feet and four feet rear and side setbacks, which the proposed ADU does comply with. Uh, following the last meeting, 
we did add condition number 24, uh, which requires that the ADU's chimney not be wood burning. Um, and just because we did have some uh, public comments regarding uh, the chimney itself, as well as its proximity to the, the redwood tree, we just gave a, a bit of a, a view for perspective of where that chimney is in relationship to it. It's approximately from our our view about 10 feet away from the, the canopy. So the, the applicant is requesting a, a number of variances, uh, including for the height limitations of second story additions, for height limitations of the proposed primary structure's trim, uh, new chimney, and for the floor area calculation methodology uh, to the portions of the first two rooms of the third story. The areas in blue here you can see on these elevations uh, represent the added massing, the solid red lines showing the maximum height of 27 feet um, for historic additions, and a dashed red line slightly above that shows the maximum allowed height for uh, chimneys regardless of whether or not they're on historic structures of 28 feet. The structure itself is historic and protected within capital zoning code and under the California Environmental Quality Act. The primary structure is on a sloped lot with a steep existing with steep existing roofs, which impose difficulties in designing compatible additions that comply both with um, historic standards uh, for you know additions and modifications, as well as the city's height limitations. Starred properties shown above um, indicate uh, which properties exceed the maximum allowable height. 114 Grand uh, is the property that is slightly brighter than the other stars. That indicates a property that also has a ch an existing chimney that exceeds the maximum allowable height. The above table provides height standards for R1 development. Uh, as well as comparing them to the variance requests. If you want me, I can read that for you. Looks like, I'm sure everyone can. Okay. Uh, maximum heights for chimneys exceed that of the structure massing. Um, On this slide, we have uh, the two uh, forward rooms on the third story. The existing structure includes a unique third story with three spaces of varying ceiling heights. The entire turret space and a portion of the central space currently exceed four feet in height and therefore count towards the floor area ratio calculation. In order to gain additional floor area, the applicant is requesting a variance to exempt the turret and central space from the floor area calculation. The rearmost room, which is not pictured, is directly accessible via a staircase and would continue to count as floor area. Typically, structures can be designed or redesigned such that roof heights and attic spaces would not count towards the FAR or floor area ratio. In this instance, the turret and forward gable roof are prominent and historically significant features which would need to be altered in order to exempt these spaces from the calculation. The structure is similarly constrained against raising the ceiling heights to increase habitable function. A variance specific to the floor area of the forward two spaces would offset approximately 165 square feet and allow the property to be developed in a manner consistent with other properties in the vicinity. Therefore, staff has uh, supported this request. Regarding the chimney height variance request, staff does not believe findings B, C, and E can be made to support a variance for the proposed chimney. The structure does have an existing chimney and could utilize um, a direct vent or an exterior wall on an exterior wall in lieu of a chimney or uh, look for somewhere else to place it 
114 Grand Avenue, which has a chimney, uh, measures only approximately 30 feet from grade as compared to the 41 feet of this proposed chimney. With that, staff recommends the commission approve the project, but deny the variance for the primary structures chimney. And I am available for any questions. Do any of the commissioners have any questions of staff at this time? Yes, I do. Commissioner Westman, excuse me, Commissioner Newman. Um, my question is, was this the Reading residence previously? Yes. Okay. No, it was the Font residence. Oh, Font, I'm sorry. Oh, this Reading. was? Yeah, this wait, was Font. Font. Wait okay, yeah, I wasn't sure about that. That's the, and my co I will uh, hold my comment. Thank you. Any other questions of staff? I have a question of staff. Um, Sean, uh, you know, I was able to talk um, and answer a lot of my questions uh, prior to this meeting because there was a lot of things that were confusing to me and, and uh, staff was excellent in clearing, clearing my questions and, and giving me square head on or a clear head on what this is all about and what makes sense and what doesn't. So I appreciate the time spent getting my head straight. But I but I I still have a problem with your uh, with your chimney and the rationale for it being a special privilege. So if the if the notion of the the turret so this is a question for you, Sean. So you're saying that the turret and the area around the turret is a uh, is worthy of a variance because basically it's, this is a historical structure and they're if they're going to keep keep it a historical and make it look the same they're basically stuck with that uh with that uh location or with that turret and that space and so there's nothing they can do about it so basically uh, we're giving them a break on what is a decorative function that they can't change. And so, you know, so be it. Let's not count that against the square footage. Now, having concluded that, you then say, all right, now there's a chimney uh, right next to that turret. And, and the reason it's so high, isn't it because it, it needs to be it needs to have a certain amount of clearance away from the turret and above the roof line in order to meet code. So they couldn't just shorten the chimney, isn't that correct? And, and meet code? Commissioner Wilk, yes, to place a chimney in that location, according to our building official, would require it to be of, of about that height. So therefore my question is rather than a special privilege wouldn't the uh, wouldn't this be a special circumstance because of its turret and because of its location and because of its historical nature that that is that is not a special privilege it's a it's it's a reason for a variance the, I know, is, is, is that is, is, what is I'm that saying, a question you corrected me before on all these things so I was hoping you can clarify before I get myself into too much trouble Okay, well, I, I think I can build on that just a little bit. The the distinction between the two variance requests that you are, are referencing there uh, is that the floor area methodology and the, and the granting of that would allow the applicant to do development on, on the and additions to the home while preserving some of the significant features. So there's a direct tie to preservation to that request, which is um, sort of critical to these variance requests. Whereas with the chimney, it, that's not uh, in direct sense of uh, any kind of preservational um, constraint or in the sense that it's not enhancing or preserving what is already there. To our understanding, there was never a chimney like that. So it was considered conjectural. Um, so I, I will just add, since it was brought up during the previous meeting, by the architect and applicant that on Queen Anne homes, they would at times have chimneys like this. So, and if he does want a chimney in that location though, he would have to make it that, that high. 
to comply with building code. That is correct. All right, and then your your ration, rationale for denial is because he doesn't need to have it in that location, and it's not historical to that particular building. Therefore, it's a special privilege? That is correct. All right, that answers my question. Thank you very much. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, I have one. And in fact, Sean, you, you touched on it. Uh, with the idea of this, you know, Queen Anne, a neoclassical Victorian home. And so I went online and I probably looked at a hundred different pictures of Queen Anne type Victorian homes. And I would say about one third of them had this tall chimney. And so it strikes me that that's an historical feature that it currently doesn't exist, but it adds to the historical nature of the design of the house. So in that regard, uh, you know, I, th I think it adds to that particular quality of the, of the overall home in being historical. So I, I will jump in here. Um, I think once we um, go through a public hearing and open that discussion, if there's more questions, the, the Planning Commission definitely has the ability to amend our findings and change the recommendation there. So, or um, to make different findings for the variant if in support of the chimney. But right. yes, I, I think Sean has adequately explained staff's position, but I'm hearing other perspective and that, and your perspective is ultimately the decision maker perspective and in your mo if there was a motion at the end to modify, um, to go, to take a different route than staff's recommendation, then we would ask for those findings that, uh, for the variance from the Planning Commission. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry if I started down the deliberation path, but I, I thought at least my question had, had mm -hmm. sort of a, a, a question -y sense to it. Um, <laughs> Are there any other questions of staff? Okay, if not, then we can move on to public comment. Uh, Katie, do we have public comment? Yes, we have the applicant's art architect, Cove Britton, and also John Galena. So, Sean, if you can um, allow one of them to speak. I have uh, given that permission to the architect. I believe he's available. This is Cove Britton here, Matt and Britton Architects, representing Sam Abbey. Uh, I'm not going to speak a lot. Um, I support the staff report, uh, except we part ways regarding the chimney. Um, in regards to special privilege, as noted, just down the street, there is a chimney that exceeds the maximum height limit. Uh, so it's not a special privilege for our chimney to exceed the height limit. Um, it's just a question that this one has to be higher than the one that's down the street. So it's not a special privilege. It's just a degree of that the height has to be taller on this one due to the existing height of the existing structure. Other than that, I'm available for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Britton. Um, anyone else? Next, we have John Galena. Mr. Galena. Are you on mute? Hello? There you go. We can hear you. Okay. Well, I don't know. I sent a, a, a letter to the commission. I don't know if everybody got to read it. Um, you know, I, I have some concerns. I live right behind uh, the property. I don't know if anybody thought about the deck concerns, but um, that I, uh, you know, I'm concerned obviously because it all blocks my ocean view, that second story bedroom. But I also was thinking with that second floor. Apologies for that. I accidentally removed permissions from the wrong person. Oh, there, there's a, I, I, 
I would like to see that the deck in the bedroom be flip flopped on the on the second floor. And another reason I listed my reasons in my letter, but also the there's a driveway that runs you know along the south side that would be a buffer uh, for the neighbors because the the current deck where the deck is now on the north side is going to be there's no buffer. There's just right. It's a large deck. It could be used for entertaining and making them you know, a lot of noise for the neighbors. And that one is, you know, right next to the next door neighbor where on the other side there's a driveway that would buffer it. And the deck, I would be happier if the deck was on that side of the house, on the south side of the house instead of on the north side of the house. And there was also other benefits that I listed before, like it's under the tree, it's cold and dark and damp because it's in the shade of the structure and the tree, where the other side would be a more pleasant deck for the owners. <coughs> And they, they may have an ocean view themselves from that deck. Uh, so I was hoping, you know, that, that the second floor deck has been an issue. And like I said, that the buffer from the driveway may make that deck have be more private, a better privacy protection for the neighbors. And we're also concerned about the size of the structure. I mean, I know that they're, the staff's approving the variance, but I mean, when you buy a house and you know that there's square footage and you buy a historic structure, you know that there's going to be square footage issues. And uh, it, I don't know that I kind of disagree with giving the uh, variance for the square footage because the structure is already large, very large. And, uh, you know, it, it'd be uh, uh, probably excessively large with that uh, variance approval. Uh, did you want to say something? Okay. That's, that's all, all right. I have to say. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Guina. Katie or uh, Shauna, is there anybody else? There is no one else with their hand raised on Zoom. Um, I'm going to accept public comment email, and if there are no new emails and public comment, I'll take that. Okay, we've heard from the public. Let's move then to uh, Planning Commission deliberation. Um, does anybody, uh, any commissioner want to start out on this one? I'll start if you want. Commissioner Go ahead, Weston. Commissioner Weston. Um, well, I think that the architect has done an exceptionally nice job on this project. I think that preserving this type of historical home in Capitola is uh, extremely important. And uh, for me, I have no problem granting them the variance for the height for the second story addition or for the floor area calculation. Um, I'm even leaning toward saying that we should grant them the variance for the chimney because when you look at the drawings in the house itself, um, the, the chimney does fit in with the style of the house and um, the work they're doing to preserve this historic structure. Um, so I'm probably leaning to give them all of those variances. Um, I'm glad to see staff put in a condition regarding the fireplace in the ADU unit, because I do believe that that would be a problem for the neighbor who lives behind. So those are my comments right now. Thank you, Commissioner Westman. Anyone else? I'll go. Go ahead. Somebody else wants to. Uh, we in, we actually encouraged the uh, variance for the, uh, the the floor area at the other meeting. So uh, they just basically did what we had suggested at that time. So I don't have a problem with that. It is a nice project. I like pretty much everything about the project, uh, except I'm uh, not persuaded regarding the chimney, and I'll support. I would support the staff recommendation with regard to the height of the uh, one chimney. Uh, Commissioner Christensen? Um, I, I, yes, I do. <laughs> I agree with Commissioner Westman. Um, I would support the a variance for the chimney height just for the sheer fact that it will, um, you can't have a wood burning chimney without it being that height. So when we would be depriving them of a historical historically accurate feature in their home. Um, and 
Yes, I, I agree with everything else. I, I think that the house is really nicely done. I like what they've done with the porch and that they've made con, you know, considerations for the neighbors with the ADU in the rear. So I support all the variances that staff has listed with addition, with the addition of the chimney variance for the height. All right, let me let me also chime in that oh sorry, Commissioner Ruth, did you want to did you yeah, want I would just I would concur with Commissioner Westman and Commissioner Christensen. I think the chimney deserves the variance because I believe it's an important historical feature just like the turret is. All right, and, and let me let me agree with uh, <coughs> excuse me that sentiment. Let me just um, um, be sympathetic a little bit to Mr. Galena, the neighbor. I uh, started out being uh, um, reticent to allow uh, the, the variance for added square footage as well. Um, but as Commissioner Newman pointed out, we've, we've kind of, you know, encouraged the, the variance for the, uh, the turret. And so once you take that out, then the square footage is within the requirement. So there's no variance needed for the square footage once uh, once we give them, once we once we admit that the turret area is is, is something that we insist on. So um, I also looked at the chimney and said, you know, if they don't have the chimney there, uh, they they're, they're, they'd have to redesign the whole thing because that is their their family room, their main entrance. You come in, you have a, this Victorian Queen Anne house, you have a big fireplace. Um, and, um, you know, that is, I think that is a, that is a feature that, um, uh, the, the applicant deserves to, uh, deserves to put in. And, uh, as long as he's consistent with the design of a Queen Anne house, I also agree that the, the, the um, uh, it, height variance of the chimney is not a special privilege and that I would, uh, uh, I would also agree with with the rest of you, with most of the rest of you, about uh, about allowing that variance as well. So, having said my piece, uh, does anybody wish to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve all um, all staff recommendations except uh, how do I word this to include the chimney height within the variances. <laughs> It's not a grant of special privilege. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Somebody help. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a, uh, a motion from Commissioner Christensen and a second from Commissioner Ruth. Any right. further discussion? All righty. Let's, uh, let's take a vote. So, Louis, can we have a roll call? Aye. No. Commissioner Ruth? Aye. Commissioner Westman? Aye. Commissioner Ruth? Aye. Um, motion passes. Um, this is twice now we have not been, uh, we haven't been unanimous. That's kind of unusual, but we're getting making some progress here. So, uh, 106 Cliff Avenue uh, passes. Congratulations, uh, Mr. Abbey, and uh, good luck with your project. Um, do we have? Uh, let's see. That's all we have on our public hearings agenda. Can we move then on to the director's report? Yes. Thank you, Chair Wilk and the Commission. Um, I just wanted to report back that the City Council on April 28th reviewed the temporary outdoor dining. It was due to expire on May 31st. I had reported at our last meeting that we've run into a couple items with the Coastal Commission regarding the um, permanent program for outdoor dining or the semi-permanent program for outdoor dining. Um, and at this point, the City Council has extended the temporary program, but with additional requirements. So they've required a maintenance deposit for each, each outdoor dining space of $500, and staff will be able to um, 
um, initiate citations. Um, and if if a restaurant depletes all their funds, then their outdoor dining would have to be removed. Um, we've also required that all the public benches be removed and they'll be returned along the Esplanade for more public seating. We're requiring um, uh, just more maintenance, replanting plants, uh, refreshing planters, putting planters every five feet because we're removing the benches. And also we're requiring, a, we're charging a fee for the lease of the space. So the city council originally was uh, looking at the rate that we were suggesting for the permanent program, but that through discussions and public comment made at the meeting that's been decreased to $200 per space. So we're right now we've we've sent out a letter to all participating restaurants and um, they have to respond by next Monday on whether or not they'd like to continue. And so that that's currently one of the items that we're working on. The other is we're doing um, we've reached out to all the restaurants in the village to get comment back on our prototype design because we want to reach hear their comments before we bring back the coastal development permit. So thank you for your comments early a um, couple months back. And now we'll be working with the restaurants. And uh, once we have a certified ordinance, the temporary outdoor dining will expire two months after. And at that point, we'll be bringing forward the coastal, the blanket coastal development permit for the prototype design. So that's your update on outdoor dining. And I did reach out to the county regarding the Kaiser project. I've not heard a response. So if I hear any, when I do hear something from the county, I will update you all. Um, but that is the director's report for this evening. Katie, Thanks. I have a question regarding the, you mentioned the benches being removed. How does that relate to the outdoor dining? So when we initially, um, started the, out, the temporary outdoor dining, we never imagined that we'd be two and a half years later, where you know, or two years later where we are today. So we had put in benches as kind of a safeguard along the street, the street edge. Oh, those, those benches, okay. I those thought you benches. Were, okay. Yeah, so we'll be removing those and they need to um, provide their own planters. We've had a lot of public comment on uh, please bring back our benches. People love to sit on the Esplanade and look out at the ocean. Okay, thank you. All right, so that is the director's report. Item number seven, our commission communications. Anybody wish to make any last minute comments? Yes, uh, I do. Mr. Newman. <clears throat> uh, I just wanted to inquire and I don't necessarily need an answer tonight, but maybe at the next meeting, as to the status of the compliance with the uh, vacation rental uh, and vacation rental tax uh, requirements. Because there was a time when there, there are a lot of vacation rentals that just advertise with signs in the window and so forth, and they're kind of off the, uh, the record to some extent. And I don't, we were looking at various options to make sure that people are complying and I, I haven't, I would like an update on that if possible. I'm, I'm happy to answer that now. And if you'd like more details, I can provide more details on the success of the project. But um, we hired an outside consultant, HDL, who is now tracking all of the um, online platforms regarding nightly rental. And then they're initiating all code enforcement tied to nightly rental. So we have hired an outside consultant um, as they're observing if any illegal nightly rentals, they're supposed to be sending out compliance letters and uh, bringing people into compliance. This only began, I want to say, uh, Sean actually has been very involved in this effort. And Sean, I believe that the actual initiation of this platform through HTL tracking it was initiated just in 2022, so it's relatively new. And, um, but I'd be happy to check in. Actually, finance is managing the overall system. And if you'd like, we can bring you back some statistics. Well, so the concern I have with that is that uh, it's sort of a cat and mouse game. And when it becomes known that 
we are um, uh, looking at the online platforms, then people, instead of using those platforms, use just window advertisement. Uh, and I'm wondering if there is a lot of non-compliance that isn't reflected in the uh, online platforms. Uh, that is a very good observation, and it's something that I'll bring to our staff for everyone to keep eyes on, because if, if there are any signs outside of the vacation rental, um, I'll, it's our duty to bring those forward. So I, I can put out a message to public works as well as our planning and building staff to keep an eye out for signs that are not in vacation rental, but I, they're not doing um, like drive-by analysis, so that definitely would be missed. Well, I mean, also the ones that are in the vacation rental district, but are not reporting. I'll check in on that and report back. Okay, thank you. All right, any other uh, commission communication? Now, I guess we'll move on to item number eight, which is adjournment. This meeting is adjourned. See you next Good night, time. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.